Welcome everybody to today's micro lecture on EU values. Today's micro lecture is structured in the following way. Uh, I will first tell you a little bit about the historic development of this topic and we'll then look at the general values of the European Union and also see about EU values in specific fields. As you know, these guiding questions should make you reflect uh, on those issues already by now. And uh, as you know, they will be answered by the end of this micro lecture. So first question, do values uh, pertain to the legal or to the philosophical field? Has the EU embraced values right from the beginning of its history? Which consequences do values have on the relationship of different member states uh, to each other? What's the legal quality uh, that values have in EU law? And are there specific values for specific fields? As you know, uh, different fields, so law, ethics, morality and religion, all try to answer the same question, which is what's the right thing to do? Values and justice is one of those values. Uh, values can be seen as a bridge between the legal and the philosophical field. And uh, so that's very important to keep in mind that values are not only important for society, but also as a bridge, so to say, between the legal and the philosophical field. So EU law very often refers to ethics and morality, uh, but as Sometimes those concepts are not defined. The values of uh, the European Union and the EU's human rights uh, have to play a very important role in that regard. So how has uh, the topic of values uh, developed uh, in EU history? At the very beginning, so in, in the 1950s, uh, EU integration has started with uh, this economic uh, form of integration, so working together in the field of coal and steel in order to safeguard uh, peace. So uh, maybe you remember that from the micro lecture on history. So it started with economic integration and at one stage also human rights have been added to this process. First by the European Court of, uh, of Justice, the, uh, the EU Court in Luxembourg, which also saw the necessity to integrate human rights uh, into the uh, European integration. Later on, those human rights have been also added uh, by the Charter of Fundamental Rights. The EU uh, then also was uh, extended, let's say, to a uh, political component. So the Maastricht Treaty in 1992 also added this political component and Finally, the Lisbon Treaty also turned the European Union into a community of values because this uh, Lisbon Treaty, which was signed in 2007 and which entered into force in 2009, uh, also uh, enshrined those values of the European Union. Now, what are those values? As you can see on the slide, uh, I may quote, the Union is founded on and that implies that they were already pre-existing, on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law, and respect for human rights, which also includes the rights of minorities. As you can see, the wording of the second sentence is slightly different. So here we have values which are common uh, to the member states in a society, singular, in which pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity, and the equality between women and men uh, prevail. So those are the general values of the European uh, Union. And now what is the significance of those values in the relationship of the different member states? The values are a precondition also to, uh, to exceed to the European Union. So if you want to join the European Union, you also have to accept those values. But also, if you are a member state of the European Union, it's very important that those values are respected because those values enable the EU and the member states to have a concept of mutual trust. So if everyone accepts those values, 
you can trust that there is a similar level of standards in all the member states. And for instance, if we look at the European arrest warrant in criminal law, if one person uh, is sent to another country because there is a request based on this European arrest warrant, then of course that can only be done if there is a mutual trust amongst member states that those values and human rights are respected also in the other member state. We've seen now the general values, but as you can see on that slide, there are also specific values or values applied in a specific way in different fields. So that uh, is the case for health, uh, where we have specific health values. We can find the values of the EU also in the field of non-financial reporting, where bigger companies do not only have to do some financial reporting, but also non-financial and diversity reporting. We can also find that in the field of sports and also in the field of digitalization. As it's also mentioned here, uh, two questions if uh, those values or those documents are legally binding or not and we uh, call documents which are not legally binding uh, uh, as soft law. And the other question on the bottom of the slide, if we have the general values applied to those fields or if we find new or specific values for specific fields. So now let's look into those four topics for health. In 2006, the health ministers have uh, defined uh, health values, specific health values, so universality, access to good quality care, equity and solidarity. And if you compare that with the general values, it's only solidarity which we can find in the general as well as here in the health values. What is also very interesting uh, in this uh, field of health is that we find very abstract values and one level below some operating principles. So principles, they, are, uh, they can have legal consequences. They can be more seen as being more concrete. So I find it very interesting to have those necessarily abstract values, but also one level uh, below operating principles to, uh, to use that uh, if uh, certain cases have to be uh, decided. If we move on to the second field of non-financial reporting, we can see this <coughs> matrix where we have the application of some of those values like human dignity, solidarity, justice uh, uh, on the one scale and uh, applying these two different relationships to suppliers, to investors, to employees, customers and so on. So this example <coughs> is a legally binding directive, more precisely an amendment to an existing directive which also imposes certain obligations on uh, bigger companies as mentioned earlier. In the, fields of <coughs> in the field of sports we do find uh, two soft law documents, so two political statements we could say here of the European Parliament on the next slide then of the Council of Ministers where you can see some of the general values, but also some uh, additional values. So tolerance, as you know, is also one of the uh, general values, but also solidarity, uh, but peace, uh, uh, friendship, respect, fair play. Those are all values highlighted here in blue, which um, of course are specific to the field of sports, uh, also leadership, compassion, uh, mutual respect, uh, but also we can find some of the general values. And of course it's a question, is that just an application of the general values or uh, do we find new values? The same uh, still in the field of sports, uh, if we look at this again non-binding document of the Council of Ministers, uh, we find fairness, which can be seen as another uh, name of for justice, team building, democracy again a general value, tolerance, equality, discipline, inclusion, fair play, friendship and so on. So general values versus more specific values. One field 
uh, where those or the relevance, the importance, the impact of values is also uh, very much uh, discussed nowadays, is the field of digitalization. That's a field where uh, very often law lags behind. So, uh, of course, certain legal requirements have to be respected, like data protection in the data protection regulation. But in addition, uh, very often uh, there is the demand or the requirement that also values and ethical principles should be respected. And it's very interesting if you look at this uh, document, um, we do find some of the general values of the EU, but in addition we also find trust. Uh, why? Because uh, especially artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, are sometimes very hard to understand, even for experts, but especially for the broader society. And therefore, I think it's no coincidence that trust is mentioned here as one additional value. So that's just a, a proposal, so to say, uh, in this field of digitalization. So that's the literature mentioned on those slides. And uh, now you know. Values can be seen as a bridge between the legal and the philosophical world, if you like. Um, it's very important to keep in mind that values have not been part of the EU integration process right from the beginning. It started with economic integration, uh, then also included human rights and spilled over also to the political field. And it was only uh, in 2007, 2009, that also values have been added uh, to European Union law. So you could say quite new, so almost uh, roughly a decade old, but uh, still very important to fill those values with life. Of course, values will always be uh, very abstract. They need to be abstract. They can be then uh, more concrete if we uh, match certain principles, like we have seen it in the field of healthcare. So that can be a very fruitful relationship of values and principles, but still the necessity to fill those values uh, with life. Those values, uh, of course, have a, um, a very important uh, impact on the relationship of member states. This idea that if we have common values, that we can also have mutual trust, that the legal system of one member state also trusts the legal system of another member state. And talking about trust, uh, as we have seen from the last field of digitalization, I think it's also very important uh, that ethical principles and values being implemented in the field of digitalization, robotics, artificial intelligence, is very important to establish tr and also to maintain trust of citizens with regard to, the, to those new technologies. What's the legal quality of values? Well, the general values, which can be found in Article 2 of the EU Treaty, they are legally binding, they are primary law, so at the highest level of the hierarchy of EU law. Uh, the specific uh, values are mainly soft law. We've also seen the one example of this non-financial and diversity reporting directive, which obviously is legally binding. Are there specific values for specific fields? Yes and no. So we have partly seen applying the general values. So for instance, uh, also requiring bigger companies to do reporting on human dignity with regard to employees, uh, customers, and so on. But we, also, we have also seen specific or new values, so to say, or at least new ter terms like fair play and so on, used in uh, more specific fields. And of course, you could always discuss using fair play, is that just uh, translating the values of dignity, of justice, uh, and giving it a different name, or should it be seen as a new value? So hopefully now you know more about uh, values in the European Union, and see you next time. <laughs>